Good morning. Welcome to United Methodist Church of Plano. My name is Steve Saunders. I have the great privilege of being the pastor here. Uh, we've been going through the book of 1 John. We're going to tackle the first two verses of John, 1 John chapter 5. Uh, next week we'll complete our study on, uh, on this book. Uh, I hope it's been helpful. Uh, we're going to, this, the last chapter here uh, really begins to press the button on our faith. And uh, I'm excited to get to it. I've got some backup scriptures to go along with it as we talk about faith in Christ. But let's pray. Uh, Lord Jesus, thank you for this incredibly beautiful uh, summer day. The blue skies, the light breeze, and uh, the, the moderate temperatures. But as exciting as that is, Lord, we're asking that, that you do an even greater work among us that you would penetrate our heart and soul with your word this morning. We pray that you would have your way with us, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Red, good morning. Happy birthday. So let's start in 1 John chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and obey his commandments, for this is the love of God, that we keep the commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? My friends, that is an exciting scripture. Our faith is a part of what helps us overcome the world. We're not talking about overcoming the world by physical force or violence or anything like that. We're talking about overcoming the world through faith, hope, and trust in Jesus Christ. Now, I want to read to you. How, what does that look like? What does overcoming the world by faith or through faith look like? I'm glad you asked. We find ourselves in Hebrews chapter 11, beginning in verse 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out of a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Verse 11, by faith. Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she was considered, since she considered him, that's God, faithful, who had promised. Therefore, from one man, who is as good as dead, were born descendants, as many as the stars of heaven. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents, because they saw that the child was beautiful, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Verse 29, by faith the people crossed the Red Sea. Verse 30, by faith the walls of Jericho fell down. After they had been encircled for seven days, by faith Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. Verse 32, now listen to this. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, and David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lion, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign enemies to flight, women received back the dead, they're dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were cut in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy. Man, that's how you overcome the world. 
by this steadfast, rock-solid faith in Jesus Christ that is immovable, indestructible, imperishable, and no one can take it away from you. The love that you have for Christ and the love that you have for his people, your family, this incredible radical love that we've been called to for one another in the body then spills out into the world in which we live. You saw what happened by faith, but I want to take you a step further. I want to go to the first two verses of chapter 12. Therefore, after reading all this about faith, and how faith conquers the world. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, whatever it is that's holding you back, get rid of it, and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Verse 2, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, or the completer of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Jesus, right now, sitting on at the right hand of the throne of God. He is the one that helps us conquer the world, not through force, not by might, not by violence, but by this steadfast faith in the one who God sent the one who rescues us from our sin, the one who gives us the, his love that flows through us. Hey, Tess, good morning. Ah, we'll be praying for uh, Miss Gloria or uh, Pug, as some of you may know her. Good morning, Arlene. Good morning, Norris. So look, this is how we conquer the world. We don't conquer it by arguing. We don't conquer conquer it by being angry at one another and not talking to one another. We conquer it by faith in Jesus Christ, by obeying God's commandments. He said, in this, we know that we are the children of God and that we love the children of God. Now, is that easy? No way, especially not on our own. But it is attainable. Otherwise, it would not be in the Bible. It's attainable through Christ Jesus. It's a high calling that we're called to live to. It's imperative, especially in these times, for Christians to continue to walk by faith and to conquer the worldly systems by faith. Now, let me find my place back in, in John, and uh, we'll, we'll close up after a quick reading. Sorry about that. Just drop my glasses real quick. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. You believe Jesus is the Christ? You have been born of God. Everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of Him. So if you say you love God, if I say I love God, then we love all who've been born again by Him. Matters not our ethnicity, our background, our country of origin, our age, nothing if we've been born of God then we love all those who too have been born of God by this we know that the love of God by this we know the love that, ch that the children of God love when we love God and obey his commandments for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments now catch this before we go and his commandments are not burdensome. I don't know about all of you, but that kind of that kind of hit me right here. I wonder how many times his commandments have been burdensome to me. And how many times now as I grow in Christ that they're it's not as difficult. It, it's not as hard to set aside my own thoughts. It's not it's not as difficult to follow his commandments. As we continue to grow in Christ, as we get strength spiritually as we are excited about him as we draw closer to him his commandments become less burdensome how do we know we love god we can continue to obey him we live according to his principles and guidance 
We stay within his guardrails of protection. And as we mature, we find out it's not as bad as we thought it was going to be. They're not burdensome. That there's certain things that we used to do that we don't miss. That's one of the benchmarks of following hot after Christ. And we all are on a different path. You may be joining us today, and you're you're just new to this, or you just started reading the Bible, and it's, hey, Jeannie, and, and you're thinking, wow, what about me? What, what about me? You continue to grow in your faith. You continue to seek Jesus, and you continue to allow him to mold you into his likeness. And you, too, will find that his commandments are not burdensome. And you will begin to see how we're able to conquer the world through our faith. And if you have any question about that, go back to chapter 11 of Hebrews, the Hall of Faith, and see what incredible things the people of God did by faith. Let's pray. Jesus, we walk by faith. We ask that you continue to give us the strength in the face of all kinds of adversity to stand up for justice, to stand up for mercy, to stand up for grace. And that we would face fear head on and walk through it by faith. That you would use us as ambassadors for Christ to bring healing and comfort to the world that only you give. And that you would help us to continue to love one another in the body. I pray it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Lynn. Everyone, we'll see you back here Sunday morning at 10 o'clock if you're up at that time. If not, we'll be back at 1030 on Monday. Have a great weekend and enjoy this weather while it lasts.